From level 0, I played 50 games as Boo, and I'm here to tell you what I learned. Before I begin, a quick disclaimer, this is all I learned from those 50 games. There's a lot more to this character than what I'll probably talk about here. Um, there's probably a lot of room for optimization, and to be honest, Boo is by far the hardest raider out of the three. So sit back and enjoy. Also, if you're looking for some real games as Boo as well, Know that all 50 of these games are uploaded on my channel. You can see them all unedited, you can see me lose, you can see me win, and on top of that, there's also a detailed Excel document in the description if you want to see all of my statistics. You can see my wins, my losses, when Boo transforms into level 2, 3 and 4, also the average time when the STM starts. You can check everything there down below in the Excel document. I upload all the time of both my wins and my losses unedited, so if you want to see that, don't forget to like and subscribe. So now let's get started. I'll start with Spopovich and split him into how I play into three segments. Probably hunting, fighting and strategy. Then I'll go into more details in Boo Level 2 and then Boo Level 3 and so forth. I may go over all the same points I did or some of the same points I did with Spopovich with other levels. I think it's relevant enough to each individual level as well. But I don't really intend to repeat myself too much. So here we are in game. Let's talk about Spopovich. Spopovich is generally the weakest level 1 raider. There is Cell, but he only lasts about 30 seconds. Spopovich, however, is very puny. He has a hard time getting to level 2 because he has to go all the way back to Boo's shell to release him. On top of that, his left click blasts are just, just a bit puny and weak. And he has no back off ability either, so he has a real hard time fighting. So his first attack is called Thrash Launcher. Here, which is the snipe ability as you see here, it's great for finishing people off and just getting those kills. When someone zooms by you, you need to use your T ability. You need to use Crash Launcher. Spopovich has roughly two more abilities. He has one called Summon Yamu, which is here, where he just summons his Yamu, and if the Yamu spots anyone, he'll just absorb them and get like a little bit less than the eighth of your bar. Otherwise, you've got the R ability which is very hard to hit and only has one use, I think. Basically, it teleports a Yamu to the opponent, and if they're moving, it'll miss. Now, there's a combo you can do with these two abilities that will one-shot any level zero, and it's an extremely important combo to learn, which I'm about to show you. This ability, this combo that you want to do, is first you'll have to use the Summon Yamu ability, and then once the level 0 gets hit by it, you have to use the energy drain ability. Now I'm going to show you here. I use my 1, summon Yamu. It gets hit, it uses energy drain, and it will finish it off right there. Now this gives you the benefit of basically giving you 75% of your energy. You can see the amount of energy in the bottom left. It is a disgusting ability. Very, very strong. The way I see it, there are two general ways you want to play Spopovich. You can either go for the civilian hunter or the survivor killer. Uh, the civilian hunter, I think, is basically when you just go for civilians only and you generally don't really go after the survivors. I think that's like it takes four for you to get that. When you get to level boo, it usually takes like two and a half minutes and you've not put any pressure on the map. It's much, much better, in my opinion, to go for hunting survivors. Because Spopovich just has all the tools for hunting survivors. He gets 50% of his energy for downing a survivor and, and absorbing him. He also has the combo. He has two abilities. It will suck energy. And also, if you get a successful melee, you also get energy. So it's really, really easy to get energy against a survivor if you can find them with Spopovich. Now, what you see here 
is uh, actually me getting someone right at the beginning. And what you'll find is that if you spawn in a certain area on a map, everyone around you will always spawn in the same area. So on this map, Highland River, I spawn in area B in front of Freezer's ship, and that guarantees that someone will always be in area A in front of the river. And there I go, I find them. Likewise, if you start in area C, you'll usually find someone in the ship in front of Freezer's ship in area B because someone will always spawn in front of the ship in area B. So I always recommend that you go for survivor hunting over civilian hunting because it gives me, I found I've had a higher win rate doing that. But, you know, pick your poison. Spopovich is always late into the game and it's hard to really um, to stop boo and a good timing. And usually, unless you start a mod front war zone in the city, you usually take a long time to get to level 2 boo in the civilian strategy. So two last things very quickly in this Popovich hunting section. Um, I want to show you the settings. Whenever you are hunting with Popovich or any or any raider for that matter, it's very important that you um, turn down the volume, the background music, and have the sound effects high. And that's because you'll just hear people a lot. You hear footsteps, you hear people crying out for uh, for safety. You hear people shooting, so it's just really, really good that you can hear things and you don't have background music um, distracting you from that. Uh, also, just the very last thing I'd like to mention when it comes to hunting is really, really important that you learn all the maps properly because there's so many caves that and that it's just hard to find things in. If you don't know your way around them, you're just going to have a hard time finding people. Especially if you don't know where the keys spawn. If you don't know where the keys spawn, there's so many times where I'm just flying about like... Too bad I don't really know where the keys are. So fighting. Spopovich is quite weak, but he can hold his own in a fight. And 1v1 fighting is actually one of the best ways he can get energy. You'll quickly find that everybody wants a piece of Spopovich because of his reputation as a weakling. Now, I'm going to show you one of my fights and then we can go over it together. Where the hell did the guy go? Oh, you. There you are. Okay, let's have a look at this. So meleeing, good idea. 1v1, good idea. 2v1, not that good an idea. Um, this is all 1v1, so it's perfectly fine, but if it's 2v1, what will end up happening is that you'll melee someone, and then you'll someone, the other person on the special beam cannon you. You'll see me use Summon Spopovich a bit as well, which is uh, generally, I think, a good idea. Um, however, you don't want to use Drain Energy, which I keep using in this fight. You want to avoid using Drain Energy. And what you're going to find here is that I'm going to use a drain energy for no reason because it never hits a moving target and I miss the chance to snipe with a crash launcher. God fucking damn it! Okay, so we know that 1v1 melee is generally a good idea. It can take a lot of damage off the opponent and it will give you a bit of energy. Use drain energy by itself, bad idea. Maybe if you use a summon Spopovich and it hits them, especially when they're not transformed, you always want to use that drain energy after that. But otherwise, don't waste your time. Now, we want to talk about what happens when Spopovich has more than one person fighting him. What you'll find when Spopovich has more than one person fighting him is that he's not very good. He doesn't have any back off abilities like Angry Shout, like level 2 Boo has. And also his um, laser beams are very weak. So what will happen is you'll end up getting a lot of damage taken. 
So what happens when you start getting attacked by a lot of people? I would recommend just flying directly upwards. And flying directly upwards has a lot of defensive advantage. Normally, let's just say before you get fought, you'll be hunting on the ground because no one can see you, no one knows where you are. And then if you run into someone, they'll usually be caught off guard as well. And that gives you the opportunity to get some energy. But once you've been spotted and you've found them, some people around you, say there's two people close to you with Dragon Charge, will decide to take you on and try and save their ally. That's when you start having a hard time and you start taking a lot of unnecessary damage with low energy taking opportunity. When this happens, fly directly upwards. Flying directly upwards is defensive because it forces the your attackers to chase you using a lot of their Dragon Charge up. And anyone wants to join in, you're directly at the top of the sky. Unless they have something like Flying Nimbus, they have to use a lot of Dragon Charge coming to get you. So once you're already up in the air, you generally just kind of want to run away and do anything you would do as a survivor to delay a raider. You just, as the raider, fly around buildings. I mean, you can even fly around the super time machine. And that will cause two or three people to run out of dragon charge. And it gives you a great, great advantage as the raider as well. Because three people just use up all their dragon charge, can't transform. And on top of that, that delays them from getting their objectives. It stops dragon balls from being got. It stops the STM keys from being found. So it really, really helps if you manage to successfully get away from people. So just to recap, low on the ground will allow you to uh, hunt more effectively, but when you're being attacked by a lot of people, you're in a disadvantaged position, as any raider for that matter, fly directly up. The best way to fly up is to go directly upwards. And then afterwards, you can double tap the direct up button, whatever it is on your console of choice, will make you go directly downwards. And that is the fastest way. It's actually faster than flying going directly upwards and directly downwards. So that's my recommendation. I'm about to be attacked now. I believe I get attacked by about three people in this. Uh, you'll see how I handle it. We'll go through it together and see what I do well and what I do bad in this situation. This is one of my earlier games. So I see instantly that another person transforms here. So I'll go up directly upwards see how fast i am no one can catch me so i keep going up and i start flying away and i do something which i don't necessarily recommend i use a spawns uh, yamu which does give me enough energy to transform to level two but look how much damage i take in exchange i think this wasn't a bad idea looking back on it because around if you take about three bars of damage and you turn to level two boo and you drain three people's dragon energy i'd say that is worth it I do take an extra hit here, but that's fine in the end. That's an acceptable amount of damage. I have level 2 boo, and I've drained you know, quite a few people of their energy and delayed them as well in getting their STM. If you look at the top left, you can see barely any keys have been got. I'm level 2, reasonable amount of health. I'd say that's a fine level 2 star. And there you have it. If you're being attacked by a lot of survivors, you want to fly directly upwards and juke them until they're finished. And then you can go back down to the ground to continue hunting. Only melee 1v1 and only use energy drain after a successful summon Yamu hit. Strategy. Let's get this Spopovich section over with now. It's extremely important you get a good Spopovich. Which is why this first section has taken so long. Because even level 2 boo is extremely powerful. Now, I'm going to list them. Strategy. Don't bother picking up more than one Dragon Ball. If you have one Dragon Ball, that's all you need. You find another Dragon Ball, leave it on the floor for the survivors to pick up. And they'll bring it to you eventually. Destroying vending machines is great, but don't go out your way as level 1. If it just happens to be right next to you, you can, you can destroy it. It's like a cooldown one or an energy one. And open the rare boxes when you see one. Because Dragon Raiders and Civilian Raiders are OP. What is the rare box? It is the small red box with a gold coming out the top of it. Only open those boxes if they're near you. Do not go out your way to open these boxes. Just do it. If you're inside a cave with a sieve or you just killed a survivor and you see a box, just open those boxes as you see them. But don't go out your way to get them because it's too risky and it just wastes your time. We'll show some very quick clips just to show you what I mean. And then we'll move on to level 2 boo. It's big read. Someone's shouting for help. I'll go get that. Be rude not to. 
Sweet. <gasps> Jack Vader! Civilian Vader! <gasps> Baby! <laughs> Quick, back to the boo! <laughs> Actually, I probably knocked him off his bike. I've got someone. Let's try this again. Get Yam over there. No, I mean, be rude not to. Let's just go get myself to level 2. I mean, <laughs> I promised I was going to be aggressive. I swear. Back here. Oh, that was really good. And really bad from him. Get the Dragon Ball. Destroy that. There we go. Absorb this guy who fell down. Don't bother. Just don't. Let's get to level 2 boo. Let's not waste our time. Oh yeah, it's Boo time, baby. And in my opinion, Innocent Boo is the strongest level 2 raider. But before I explain that, let's go into his abilities. He has two great active abilities in Angry Shout and Go Go Gum. Boo's Angry Shout is the strongest back off ability in the game, interrupting stuns. What? I didn't eat the guy? Forcing enemies back. Dealing out AoE damage. Booze is better than Freezes too, as it sports a two second shorter cooldown. You can also use Angry Shout to hit through the STM. For this reason, you can use Angry Shout defensively and offensively. Remember what we talked about with Spopovich? When being ganged up on, go high into the sky, and if you get melleed, you can use Angry Shout. Likewise, if you have survivors running around you on the ground in melee range, you can also use Angry Shout for a guaranteed kill. Go Go Gum is an incredible root ability. It deals damage and keeps enemies in place. It's almost impossible to dodge and has a short cooldown. If you can catch someone with this, I recommend spamming Key Blast on them. You can also melee if it's 1v1. Don't use Boo's snipe ability, Innocent Blast, however, as it deals less damage and is only really used for killing an enemy that's trying to get away. Right, next ability is Innocent's Cannon. It's the same as Crash Launcher. Use it in the same circumstances as Spopovich's Crash Launcher. Final ability, might as well not exist. It's called Angry Explosion. Angry Explosion is a sort of charge up AoE. And the reason I recommend never ever using it, pretty much under any circumstance, is because it can be interrupted. <laughs> so you spend all your time charging it, and it's just a free setup, it's a free special beam, beam cannon to the face. So don't use that. Innocent Boo is really powerful in some areas, but glaringly weak in others. Let's go over his strengths first. His key blasts are very powerful, they're high DPS, they're very rapid. Very fast, very far reaching. I recommend ignoring melee and focusing on key blast spam as it's far more effective at killing opponents. I'd only melee if it's 1v1 and you have to do it. He has access to the strongest back off ability in the game, Angry Shout. The only raid line with a root ability. He recovers HP when absorbing sieves and survivors. Uh, on top of that, his footsteps are very quiet. Which is great for hunting, as you can run into people and catch them completely off guard. Hero Boo's footsteps in comparison to other raiders of the same level. Weaknesses. Innocent Boo has some glaring ones. He has no tools whatsoever to find survivors with for starters. Freezer has two scouting abilities on the other hand, 
uh, Zabar and Antidoria, and so has key sense to find people with. Quiet footsteps is a runners-up prize compared to those. Once you've found someone and killed them, it also takes 9 seconds or so to absorb them. You need to do that 3 times or 27 seconds total. It's so, so easy for a survivor to interrupt Boo's absorb again and again with stuns, crinning shoes and rockets. It could buy the survivor so much time to set keys and find Dragon Balls with. As a level 2, Innocent Boo rules at fighting, but he's worse than Spopovich hunting down survivors. This makes achieving level 3 Boo extremely difficult. One important tip to bear in mind is Boo. Remember where you kill people. You may not think about this, but Frieza can absorb survivors at a distance, so he doesn't need to remember. And Cell can check where the survivor's bodies are located using key sense. Boo, on the other hand, does not have any of these, at least until level 3. You need to remember where you kill people, or else this can happen. <laughs> I should have made um, more of an effort to figure out where I killed this person. Because I'm bad at it. Oh. Oh, this is really bad. I killed the person. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Now for tips on how to improve your play with Boo. Knowing strengths and weaknesses is good and all, but good decision making is what drives the wins home. A lot of games, you'll never make it to level 3. So let's talk about strategy again. What I mentioned with Spopovich also applies here. Only keep one Dragon Ball, only open rare boxes when they're right next to you, but now you are free to kill any vending machines along the way. When to destroy areas? A lot of people are, must ask themselves this question, and this is my two cents on the matter. As Boo, you don't want to destroy areas for no reason. Innocent Boo can come 2-3 to three minutes into the game, and if you don't have a Dragon Ball, people are starting to think about summoning Shenron against you. You need that area destruction to interrupt Shenron. Just need to make sure to remember to check that they're not summoning an area X's before destroying an area. You don't need to worry about rushing it either. Just make sure to check area X, because if you are destroying an area where Shenron is being summoned, the game will hard block Shenron from being summoned, so you don't have to rush it whatsoever. Or you end up like this. What the? Oh no! Damn! <laughs> The Avia X version! That's my fault. Oh boy. Well, at least the VTR and the SDM is going to be slower. How the hell am I ever going to win against this? When else should you consider destroying an area? Well, it's a fantastic defensive ability too. If you find yourself facing down the barrel of four or more transformed survivors, you can waste the dragon energy. I'm gonna to have to get this time machine though. If you're holding a Dragon Ball and have a dead body you can absorb, I would also consider destroying an area then going down to absorb the body. It's worth noting this is a riskier strategy. If the body gets sensor beamed whilst you're up there, or uh, you get Dragon Ball gets taken from you, it can actually backfire. Especially since I tried to attempt to kill them all instead. Lastly, I would consider destroying an area if I'm ahead. Have a look at this video. Here, I'm just camping area A, waiting for people to come into me. This is not a terrible idea, but I could have done better. For example, I could pick up the Dragon Ball near me, then use it to destroy area A. This would force the STM to start. Destroying the area would also cause it to charge slower, giving me more time. 
it also starts the esteem under my terms. Everyone else will need to wait or use resources before they engage, because they don't have any dragon charge left. This would allow me to destroy the SDM before they could do anything, and that guarantees my win. It may look like I'm in an unlosable position here, and that is partly true, but it is worth bearing in mind that a good team of level 3 survivors are capable of defeating level 3 boot, especially if they successfully escape and re-engage later. So which area to destroy? Hmm, I would consider destroying an area that doesn't have a key taken. They're most likely to have the most resources in them, and have the added benefit of slowing down the STM. Outside of the Dragon Balls, there are other tips I can give. Don't get baited away chasing survivors. Instead, you need to remember where you are and what is worth protecting. For example, look at this clip. It is the worst mistake I have ever made in a game, which costed me the victory as well. Let's go through it together and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we got one body here. I just found a second person. Got two dead bodies. There's a Dragon Ball here as well. I dropped the Dragon Ball. Two dead bodies. Five Dragon Balls are here. I tried to finish them off. That's a bad idea. There we are. I'm fighting. That's good. Yep, I keep fighting. Good. So you can see a lot of fighting is going on here. That level 3 is about to die. Instead of finishing off level 3, I start going after this level 2. Now, think about what I'm wasting here. There was Dragon Balls there, and potentially three dead bodies. And instead I chased this guy, letting everybody else get revived, giving people the Dragon Balls, and then giving everybody all the time they need to finish off the Super Time Machine. What a terrible play. God fucking damn it! Other things to watch out for. Like I said before, remember where you killed the bodies, because you need to keep an eye on the important ones, especially to make sure no one tries to resurrect them. Finding someone trying to resurrect a player is like Christmas coming early for a raider, so make sure to do that. Unless you know exactly where a survivor is, don't waste time being in areas that have already had their key placed. Being the raider is all about going to areas that are being contested, such as areas that don't have their key set. Or maybe the survivor's team's only level 3 dead body. Or an important STM key socket. This game is about conflict over areas of value. So basically, camp, camp like your life depends on it. And if your opponents have run out of steam, try to press your advantage. Or force the STM to spawn if you can. Also, do not fear fighting level 4's 1v1. Or any 1v1 for that matter. The raider has a huge advantage over anyone. 1v1. See this clip of my friend and me having a practice fight. Oh. I will defeat you. What? <laughs> How does it work sometimes? You transform. Take the beating like a man! Let's wrap up Boo level 2 now with some quick tips and what to do during the STM. As soon as the STM spawns, you want to start destroying it. If no one stops you, congratulations, you win. Otherwise, they have to come to you. The STM will start repairing itself over time once it has been damaged, but it does have three different damage save points, which you can see visually as it gets destroyed. So don't worry about losing too much progress if you get distracted. Uh, a lot of raiders like to try taking the STM to its last save point and going for the 7 survivor kill. I am greedy like that, guilty as charged. But in all honesty, all raiders should just destroy it ASAP. You'll actually find yourself winning more games that way as well. If someone is activating the STM, do not fly too close to them. The survivor will start kiting you around the STM and dodge potentially forever. Floor milling does not cut it either. Instead, fly about as high as you can above the startup machine and shoot downwards for a good angle and you'll get them every time. Lastly, outside of the advice I've already given about good decision making, such as holding a dragon ball and keeping an eye on the survivors, 
always make sure to keep an eye on the supplies. When the supplies drop around the radar to help out the survivors, you can hear them being open. So make sure to jump on over and uh, finish off anyone that goes near them. And that's Boo Level 2. And almost everything I have to say on how to be a Boo Raider, everything I have said up to now, also applies with Level 3 and 4. But now you just have more tools in the box, which I'll just quickly go over now and uh, end the video with what talents I'd recommend, if any. Oh yeah, time to get to level 3 boo. Mmm, mmm, yeah, gotta taste that candy. Whew. Now that I'm level 3 boo, everything's fine, right? Wait, right, any second now. But come on, go up. But the, look at the super time machine bar. It's taking so long. Oh my god, hurry up. Why does this, everything is boo, have to take so long. Just even the level 3 takes a long time and that's it. You saw it, Boo level 3 takes from absorbing the final survivor to transforming 24 seconds to complete. That is a whopping amount of time. And then what King Kai said was right, every second truly does matter in this game. I would say if the STM is not up, you'll be fine. But if the STM is up, don't even bother trying to get to level 3. Boo is already a crazy good fighter and 24 seconds can really make the difference between winning and losing. On that note, if there are any survivors downed after the STM, I don't even try and absorb them anymore. It's just an opening to be hurt and like I said it takes 9 seconds to absorb. When the STM is up, every second counts. So you don't want to spend 24 seconds transforming to boo level 3 and all the interrupts that will happen during the STM only get to level 3 if the STM is not up otherwise don't waste your time level 2 boo is a fantastic fighter and everyone's coming to you when the STM is up so the weakness of not being able to find anyone has been solved boo level 3 is a slightly improved fighter compared to boo who has been given two fantastic hunting abilities and one extra fantastic defensive ability as well. His key blasts are a little bit stronger than Boo's, and they're faster. They're like they're like sniping abilities, which is fitting because he doesn't actually have a sniping ability anymore. Outside of that, he um, comes with all the other perks a level three would come with, such as um, being able to knock down level twos without having to melee them, which is extremely useful. So I'm going to go over the abilities now. Boo has two super attacks. The first is called Full Power Blast Volley. You can pair this with good old Golgo Gum for the stun volley combo you often see survivors doing on a radar. You can also use this ability like Cell Level 3 does to get people off the STM which we'll see in this clip. His second ability is called El Rain and it shoots three homing beams at survivors. Just throw it out when you see some. It still spots the same old angry shout and Golgo Gum like Innocent Boo does. But more importantly, he gains key detection, which can be used to find survivors in your area, which is great for hunting, by the way. Make sure not to do this too high in the sky, as the range isn't fantastic. You can use it to remind yourself where down survivors are now, as seen in this clip. The last new ability is called Ill Bomber, which stops survivors from sensing your key and allows you to travel great distances in a short period of time. It can be, it cannot be cancelled, when activated, so just wait for the ability to reform you again. This is obviously a great hunting ability for catching up to survivors. It can also be used as one of the strongest radar defensive abilities in the game, as you can use it to just run away and hide from transformed survivors, as you see in this clip. One mistake I often make with level 3 Boo is that I forget to use his abilities because I rarely get to level 3 Boo. I mostly win and lose at level 2. 
so make sure you use those if you become level 3 boo before the SDM. Congratulations, you win. Boo time. When you absorb enough survivors to get to level 4, they will go into your head where you can proceed to slot them all. I recommend you find Innocent Boo first as a priority, as if the survivors find them before you, they can use it to escape your head and ETM away. I use Ill Bomber to hunt and find Boo first, and then once Innocent Boo has been found, I use Key Sense to see where everyone is, then Ill Bomber to find a survivor, Kill the survivor, rinse and repeat until all are dead. If you are a sadist, you can purposefully let them out your head. Once that happens, you'll become Kid Boo, in which you spam all of your abilities. Anyone caught and downed by Kid Boo will just be annihilated in a second and removed from the game. So, congratulations, you win the game. Lastly, it would be remiss for me not to mention and talk about talents for Boo. Um, which ones do I like? Angry Shout and Go Go Gram are must haves. Getting 20 talent points in Angry Shout will reduce it by 2 seconds. There are a lot of times in games when I am spamming Angry Shout wishing I could use it and it's just it's almost there and you get taken out the melee and you can't use it. So it does make a difference. Same thing with Go Go Gram. Puts it down by 1 second it's a very useful ability, make it as short as possible. Outside of that, those are the only two mandatory skills I would say. Turn into candy was, I kind of regret. It's not like it has no use, it just doesn't help level 2 boo. You see that when I first started playing, I assumed turn into candy would make it allow me to turn into boo level 3 easier. However, it does not do that. What it does do is, at level 3, because all the talents carry on to level 3, which is why Angry Shout and Gogo Gum are also good to have, because it carries on to every single level. It helps level 3 Boo get to level 4 easier, which is helpful because getting people in your head is a guaranteed win. What it basically does allows level 3 Boo to go from having to absorb 2 survivors and a sieve to 1 survivor and 2 sieves. If you don't want to go for turning to candy, a uh, great talent I would recommend is Margin Boo Resurrection. Margin Boo Resurrection will allow you to need one less survivor absorb with Yamu in a few situations. So you don't end up like this. Fuck, where is the boo? Where do I even start? <laughs> do you, are you even full energy? It looks like you need like... Oh, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> How does this happen? <laughs> what? So I don't even get- I don't get 12 and a half percent! Oh my god. Please say this, just get someone. <laughs> Summon Yami is also a great ability. Reduces it by one second. Uh, that's a great idea. Summon Yami is a fantastic ability. I would um, invest in that as well. Key Detection, Ill Bomber. If I could change talents, I'd probably change Turn Into Candy into Key Detection or Ill Bomber. Great abilities. Level 3 boo doesn't really matter what you invest in because he's that strong you basically won the game anyway. So why not just invest every single talent into Yamu and Level 2 boo? Make them the strongest you can. Strengthen up the weaknesses. First two talents though, so Angry Shout, Go Go Gum. After that, I just have at it. I swear this time, one last tip. If you want to get better at any game for that matter, I would highly recommend recording your games. If you use Windows, it's just pressing down the Windows button and the R and you'll start recording your games. You make a video, you can look at it and you can critically evaluate your play. That's what I did to help improve myself. I'd also like to give a shout out to my best friends Chris and Zach who have looked through a lot of the videos and given me feedback. Thank you so much for making it this far throughout the video. If you have made it this far, please consider subscribing and liking the video and also leaving a comment. I upload all my games completely unedited and you can also see 
all the games and notes for this video in my Excel document in the description. Thank you and goodbye.